slacking off. At some points, every kid does it. Every single one. And yes, even those goody two-shoes that claim they have never even thought of disobeying the rules or not completing their work. There will come that one test. That one assignment that makes them stop and think about if all the effort they're putting in this is truly worth it or not. It's just that most of them decide not to act on it. I was by no means a complete dead end when it came to my academics. In fact, I was an A and B student for the most part. Although, I had my fair share of failures, missing work, and discipline issues. None of it was major enough to put a crippling mark on my record. This particular day had started like any other. Boring class, a monotonous teacher. Use this information in uninterested students. I hadn't gotten much sleep the night beforehand. The coffee that I had bought from our local Starbucks before coming to school wasn't doing much to help me stay awake. My eyes felt heavier than anvils as I fought to stay conscious. Emma, are you paying attention? Came the voice of my history teacher, Mrs. Mays. I did my best to snap to attention and pretend like I was giving my full effort. Grabbing my pencil as I scribbled down nonsense for a dramatic effect. Yeah, sorry. I replied weakly. Just kind of tired. She glanced at me with an expression that said, I don't believe you in the slightest. And turned back to the board to continue the lesson. It was apparent that she had no interest in my excuse. My fatigue only increased as the mundane class went on. Sleep was pounding its way at the back of my eyeballs. It took every ounce of my mental fortitude and strength I had to prevent my eyelids from coming down and plunging me into a peaceful slumber. But as time went on, the clock ticked by and the sounds of the room weren't enough to stimulate me. The need for sleep eventually overcame my efforts. It just got too strong to fight any further and I was out cold soon enough. Laying my head on my arms as they rested on my desk. When I had awoken, my head was still awkwardly wedged between my arms. A lazy yawn left my mouth as I leaned back in my chair to stretch. Turning my head, I quickly was met with the sight of an empty classroom. No students and no teachers. And no sounds of conversation or any kind of socializing coming from the hallways. Huh? I groaned, reaching down into my pocket and retrieving my phone to check the time. 10.14 p.m. Immediately my heart sank. There is no possible way I could have slept that long, I thought. It all felt like some sort of bad dream. Why had no one tried to wake me up? I was sitting in the dead center of the classroom. So, not being able to see me wasn't the problem. Mrs. Mace of all people would have been more than thrilled to obnoxiously drop a book right on my desk to jerk me awake. And regardless, I tried unlocking my phone in, in an attempt to open the phone app and access my contacts to see if I could call for help. Only to find that I had no signal, and that also applied to the Wi-Fi. I was completely cut off. No way to reach out. I dashed over to the front of the classroom and tried the landline on my teacher's desk. It turned out to also be a dud. I was mainly hung up on the fact that I somehow had no signal in the building. Crap! I exclaimed out loud, taking a deep breath and trying to prevent myself from panicking. That's the last thing you want to do in these kinds of situations. I tried to put common sense in the forefront of my mind. I saw no point in staying behind in the current classroom. There was nothing in there to help me and I had exhausted all the possible options. And so I stepped out into the dimly lit hallways, immediately becoming uneasy. There was something so unsettling about being in a school when it was empty. It felt eerie, just flat out wrong. Every one of my footsteps was amplified by the silence. 
even the exhales of my breath seemed deafening in the empty halls. Hello, I called out, praying desperately to get some sort of response. But of course, nothing came, and once again, I was met with unforgiving silence. I peeked into the other empty classrooms, uh, attempted to use their phones as well, but received the same results as earlier. Nothing seemed to be working. I took a different approach and made it to the main entrance of the building to try and open the doors to leave. But as soon as I had wrapped my fingers around the handle and yanked, they wouldn't budge. Not in the slightest. Are you serious? I complained, violently pulling at the handles and trying to throw the door open. Every bit of strength I wasted trying to get them open was futile. I was trapped with what appeared to be no way out. As I was about to give up, I remembered the glass in the doors. I could smash one of them and slip through into the freedom of the night. I quickly ran to one of the classrooms, grabbed a chair, and came back. I fixated my eyes on the door for a few moments before raising the chair and slamming it against the glass as hard as I could, only for it to pathetically backfire. I howled in pain when the vibrations of the blow were sent out through my hands, and I dropped my makeshift battering ram. The glass didn't have so much as a scratch on it. It was completely untouched and undamaged. How? was all I could let out as I cut my hands together still stinging from my unsuccessful swing. So this time, I went for a different strategy, picking the lock. I was a no-skilled lock pick by any means, but I saw no other choice and I grabbed a paperclip from one of the nearby rooms, straightened it, and attempted to pick the lock of multiple exits. As soon as I stuck the dang thing in, it broke. I don't know how or why, but the second that it made contact with the inside of the lock, it would just simply split in half over and over. I'm pretty sure I went through nearly a dozen paper clips before I finally gave up and leaned against a nearby wall, rubbing my forehead as I tried to think of something else. I truly had no way out. That much was obvious. My best hope was probably to find somewhere to get comfortable and wait it out until morning. I pulled out my phone again to at least be able to check the time. 10.31 p.m. Just as I was reaching down to put my phone back into my pocket, my ears picked up a small and faint whistling sound coming from the cafeteria. It had a rhythm, like it was a tune being rehearsed. The night custodian, it was the first thing that had crossed my mind. He could help me get out of here. I practically sprinted towards the cafeteria, nearly tripping and falling in my haste. I was determined. I wasn't going to let this strange situation go on any longer. This guy was pretty much my savior at this point. Arriving at the entrance of the cafeteria, I found no one. The custodian was nowhere to be seen. Not him or any of his cleaning supplies. But the whistling... The whistling had gotten louder than before. It was coming from the center of the cafeteria, but there was no source or voice it could have originated from. Not one that I saw. This is when I began to panic. I involuntarily clenched my hands into fists. My fight or flight instincts were going off like crazy. There was no tangible threat around me, but my stomach was still churning churning like I was being stalked by a hungry predator. Who's there? I shouted. The only response I received was the sound of the whistling growing louder. I snapped my head around, desperate to find some sort of answer to the mysterious rhythm. But everything was just as empty and dimly lit as before. It was getting to a point where I wanted something to be behind me. At least then, I would know what to run from. My skin was crawling. I could feel the goosebumps forming around me. I just wanted this to be over. 
A small part of me held out false hope that I was only dreaming. But I knew the bitter truth. I wasn't. I was fully awake going through this real life nightmare. I did the only thing that I could and I started to walk away from the cafeteria. Luckily, the whistling became fainter the further away that I got. But another sound replaced it. Something far worse. Something much more bone chilling. That I nearly jumped out of the clothes that I was wearing. Hey, where are you going? A deep scratchy commanding voice called out to me. It sounded beyond angry. Angry at me. As if I had just committed some horrible crime and I needed to pay. I didn't look back. I didn't even take a second to think. I just ran. Ran as fast as I could. Letting the loud collision of my footsteps with the hard floor bounce off the walls as I booked it. I laid eyes upon a staff bathroom at the end of the hallway. I couldn't hear anything giving chase behind me, but it didn't matter. I kept moving. The sight of the bathroom causing me to only pump my legs harder as I approached it. I launched myself at the door, grabbed the handle and threw it open, and then quickly closed and locked it behind me. I turned around, rested my back against the door and let out a huge sigh of relief. But my heart was still going a mile a minute. It took a bit for the adrenaline to cool down. I figured I was safe in here for now. Everything looked to be the same as always. A toilet, a sink, a mirror. But I didn't dare look in the mirror for too long. Call me paranoid all you want, but you would feel the same way if you were in my situation. There was an energy, a force of some sort that was giving me the overwhelming urge to fall asleep in the bathroom. I can't explain it so, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. This wasn't just me being tired or experiencing normal fatigue. I truly had no idea what it was or what caused it. I just knew that I couldn't go back to sleep again. That's what had got me in this mess in the first place. I fought against it as much as I could, but the bathroom was winning. If I stayed in there for long enough, I would surely succumb to its demands for my slumber. I didn't want to go back out there, believe me. But who knows what would happen if I were to fall asleep for a second time. I couldn't take that risk. And so, I sucked it up, prepared myself for whatever horrors might be waiting for me on the other side, and I swung the door back open. This time around, I wasn't in the hallway this bathroom usually resided in. No, I was in a much more broken down, dreary, and cobweb infested space. It was lined with rotted wood supports with a concrete floor. Not to mention all the insulation running along the corners and ceiling. The basement. I was in the freaking basement. At this point, questioning how the door led me to the dang basement seemed idiotic. All things considered, I just had to keep moving along. I stopped caring how weird things got, as long as I could keep myself alive and kicking. I stepped out into the cold, bitter, and even a little damp air. Granted, it wasn't as silent as the rest of the building above. No, I had the company of all the furnaces and boilers running. The sounds of rats and other rodents scurrying across the ground. God, I've always hated vermin. The basement was by no means bright, but it had enough light running through me to at least know where I was going. I crept around corner to corner, turning back every few seconds to make sure someone, or rather something, wasn't following me. Every second felt like an eternity in the isolated territory. I'm gonna be honest, it was extremely tempting to sit down in a corner, give up and die, but I knew I couldn't go out so pathetically. I needed to keep moving. As hopeless as this horrific situation seemed, I still had a hope that I would get through it unscathed, even though such optimism felt pointless. The corridors of the basement were highly confusing. 
I ended up going in a circle multiple times. It was unnecessarily convoluted in its design, which meant that I would be spending much more time down here than I wanted to. But in the end, I knew that it was worth it to put an end to this. The now familiar sound of the whistling returned, but this time it seemed much closer, louder, more aggressive than before. It still kept that same rhythm it possessed earlier, a song that I had never heard before. No, please no, I whispered out loud, debating back and forth on whether or not to cut my hands over my ears. I didn't want to deprive the sense from myself in case I wasn't the only thing down here. I needed to hear the noises of something else, anything else, anything but that godforsaken whistling. Emma, came that same bassy and monstrous voice from earlier. I stopped, not being able to do anything as a result of the paralyzing fear running through my veins. The sheer auditory force of that voice made my legs tremble. It was far worse down here. The walls were much closer which caused it to echo powerfully through the tight hallways. Just like last time, I couldn't hear any sort of footsteps or mass moving towards me with the boys, confirming it was disembodied and without form. Come back, Emma. It rang out again. I ran even faster than before. I didn't care which direction I went or where the corridors led me. I just needed to get away. But I was hopelessly trying to outrun something I didn't understand. I sprinted from corner to corner, looking for any sign or way to get out of this hellish basement. It felt endless, like I had no chance of ever leaving and this would soon become my final resting place. I kept going. I could feel myself becoming more winded and losing precious energy by the second. My eyes widened when I found the elevator door sat at the far end of one of the hallways. Of course, I wasn't naive enough to think that it would be the complete end all of this. After everything that had happened so far, it seemed too good to be true. But it was my best shot. I picked up the pace and threw myself at the door, rapidly slamming the palm of my hand against the buttons as I kept twisting my neck to see behind me. No, Emma, please, don't go, the voice persisted this time sounding desperate, like it needed me to stay down here. The elevator doors opened slowly with the ding. I quickly jumped inside and repeatedly pressed the button for them to close as quickly as possible. Once they came together and the image of that basement was finally wiped from my line of sight, I leaned back against the door and let out a huge sigh of relief while clenching my trembling hands together. The gravity of the situation was really starting to get to me. I had so many questions with not a single answer. I didn't know if I would truly make it out of there. What if I die trapped here in this strange dimension? Will people even know that I was gone? Surely somebody would come looking. I knew that it would be pointless to go to the police if I ended up back in reality. They would laugh me off as some nutcase teenager trying to get her name in the paper. No one of importance would take me seriously. Soon, the elevator dinged as it came to a stop. I straightened my posture, clenched my fists, and prepared myself for whatever might be waiting for me on the other side. When I stepped out, I was seemingly in a classroom. But instead of all the hard, plastic metal chairs that usually occupied the space, they were all office chairs with wheels at the bottom, all of which faced the opposite side of the room that I was on. A marble counter was on the left side with an assortment of sinks and coffee machines. I quickly realized where I was. It wasn't any of the classrooms. It was the teacher's lounge. In all of the chairs sat the figures of teachers from the school, most of which I recognized but I could only see the back of their heads, except for one. Standing prominently at the front of the room was Mrs. Mays, 
pointing at the whiteboard with words all over it written in red marker. Words that I didn't recognize the language of. I had never seen them before. Not English, Spanish, Russian, or anything of the sort. And the thing is, Mrs. Mace looked different. Horrifically different. For one, most of her outfit was torn to shreds and ripped up. It had clearly seen better days. Her hair was a hot mess, looking as if she had stood in front of a high-powered fan for an extended period of time. But that was only minuscule compared to what I focused on the most. The spine-chilling feature that truly caught my attention. Her teeth. God, her teeth. They were elegantly sharp, like high-grade surgical knives. They could easily tear through something like flesh or tissue, like it wasn't even there. Not that I wanted to find out. Well, it seems like you've finally awoken. Pretty little Emma. She cackled, her scratchy voice echoing off the walls of the room. What, what is this? I muttered. With no response from Mrs. Mays, all the other teachers turned around in their chairs to face me, the supports creaking as they shifted their weight. When they revealed themselves, they were in a similar shape to Mrs. Mays. Torn clothing, messy hair with razor-sharp teeth that would make a great white jealous. They all smiled wildly at me, not moving a muscle. None of their eyes even blinked as their teeth gleamed through the room in the dim lighting. It's rude to interrupt a meeting, Emma, Mrs. Mace announced, only increasing the malicious, hungry look in all the teacher's eyes. Stay away from me, I demanded. It was a miracle I even found the courage to speak in the first place. The teachers all stood up slowly, causing me to shift back towards the elevator doors. I reached back to press the button to call the elevator back up, but my heart practically exploded in my chest when I didn't feel anything. I snapped my head around, only to find nothing but a plain white wall. The elevator was gone, as if it were never there. I froze, raising my hands in front of me to prepare for an attack. You see, Emma, we can't stand it when you don't pay attention. All of you ungrateful little brats. Mrs. May snarled. You waste all the education we try to provide you with. So much knowledge and information. Yet, it means nothing to you. But now... Oh, I know you're paying attention now, aren't you? I kept inching away against the wall as the teachers crept up on me. Little by little, step by step, they moved in formation like a fleet of soldiers, their smiles only stretching further as they got closer. There were no doors and no windows and no exit. This time, I was truly trapped with no hope left. This would be my end getting torn apart by these demonic doppelgangers of my educators. One of the teachers lunged to me, opening his jaws and nearly getting a mouthful of my forearm. I quickly yanked it away. The surface of my skin ended up getting scratched by a couple of his teeth. Blood was drawn. It silently dropped to the floor as I howled from the stinging pain. The other teachers still maintained their manic grins, as they closed in on me. I tried to fight. I tried everything in my power to prolong the agonizing death that was just seconds away from becoming a reality. I kicked, punched, screamed bloody murder as I felt their hands grabbing and tugging at me. The texture of their skin feeling so rubbery as it came into contact with mine. It wasn't long before I lost any sort of advantage I had. They grabbed me. They continued to smile ear to ear with their serrated teeth as I felt the saliva drop from their mouth onto my face. They taunted me with their expressions, wanting me to see how much they enjoyed my unfiltered terror as I waited for them to begin tearing me apart. But as if what little light was left had gone out, everything went pitch black. 
a deep, endless, void-like black lacking any color. And then a sudden burst of white hit me like a semi-truck. I tilted my head up, feeling slightly dizzy from the groggy sensation of waking up from something so intense. I took a look around and found myself in the school nurse's office now, except it was much more bright than what I had experienced for the past who knows how long. I was laid out on one of the cots, a pillow underneath my head for support. Good to see you awake again, Emma, said a soft, feminine voice. The nurse walked in. I was relieved to see her clothes weren't torn. Her teeth weren't serrated and her hair looked well put together. I was even a little jealous of how elegantly she had maintained it. What the heck happened? I groaned, lifting myself to sit up. You fell asleep in Mrs. Mace's classroom. When she tried waking you up after class, you wouldn't move from the seat. She told me that you kept gripping it tightly and making strange noises. I think you may have been having some sort of intense nightmare. Our security guard, Roy, you've seen him around, correct? Well, he brought you here. And I've been looking after you just in case it turned into something worse. I glared at her dumbfounded. That didn't feel like a nightmare at all. It was so vivid. It simulated sensations to a level of detail far beyond any dream I had had in the past. Oh, I said, adjusting my sweatshirt. Well, thank you, but I think I'm okay now, I responded. Can I go? I suggested. I'm desperate to get home as soon as I could. The nurse glanced at me with a friendly smile, biting down on her bottom lip as she shifted herself in her chair. Well, it's actually three o'clock. The school day is over. I called your mother to come pick you up if that's okay. She'll be outside any minute if you want to go away for her. Yeah, thanks. That'll work. I really appreciate it. I smart. Still rubbing the remaining sleep from my eyes. I got up from the cot and marched over to the door. Just before I stepped out, the nurse's voice stopped me dead in my tracks. And Emma, from now on... Please, try not to fall asleep in class, she informed me, a hint of condescension in her tone. I ignored it. I had no sort of drive left in me to argue. Something clicked in my mind as I walked away. I passed the main office desk and I headed out the door. Grabbing my right arm, I lifted up my sweatshirt sleeve, and there was a scar. A small stretch of dry blood running across my forearm. I looked up and darted my eyes around. The reception ladies behind the desk were now glaring at me. They appeared normal, not like their hideous doppelgangers. But the way they looked at me told me that they knew something. Something I didn't. I broke eye contact and got out of there as quickly as possible. Jumped in the car with my mom and I drove home. All I could do was stare at the scar on my forearm the entire ride, even as she tried to engage in conversation. How did you get that, sweetie? My mother inquired, seemingly genuinely concerned. Just scratched myself with a pencil. I lied. From that day forward, I got my schedule on track. I made sure to bring highly caffeinated beverages around with me as often as I could. Never again was I going to fall asleep in class. Not after that. I don't know what that was or what it meant, but I knew dang well it wasn't just some nightmare. It was a warning. A warning I know for a fact I'll never forget. Whatever you do... Do not fall asleep in class, ever. For the love of God, please stay awake. I got lucky and made it out of whatever warped reality nightmare I was put into. But you, you may not be so lucky.